In this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, bioassays. So during the course of this lecture, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to discuss um, um, topics related to bioassay. Uh, we would be introducing uh, bioassays. We'll be looking at the principles of bioassays. We'll be looking at the applications and uh, the requirements of bioassays and the classification of bioassays. So that is what we um, set out to cover um, in this lecture. So why should we even bother studying about bioassays is the question that should uh, you know, come to us when we um, begin this lecture. Um, the reason being, um, in pharmaceutical research, Um, it is a regulatory requirement for new drugs to be characterized. So characterization is required um, as part of the dossier to be submitted by the drug sponsors to the regulatory agencies um, as a prerequisite for clinical studies, um, eventually which is required for um, marketing. Okay. Um, so that... that um, is um, a requirement. The drug has to be characterized. So what do we mean by characterization? So characterization basically means um, describing um, the most typical characteristics. Okay, so describing the most uh, typical characteristics is what we understand by characterization. Okay. Um, so characterization involves, so characterization involves Um, studying and documenting, studying and documenting the uh, physical chemical properties and biological activity of the drug. Okay. So there are two things that um, are important in characterization. We need data about the physical chemical properties and data of the biological activities. Okay. So what are physical what are physical chemical properties? So physical chemical properties, um, let's say, um, physical pro chemical properties for a drug would include its um, chemical composition, um, structure, solubility, 
I mean, if it's a tablet or a powder, the particle size, um, the crystal property, which would have a bearing on whether it can be formulated as a tablet or a capsule um, or any other dosage form, the purity, the stereochemistry, and if it's a biologic or a biological drug, Um, sequence information uh, with respect to the protein and data on the structure, structure of the protein, meaning its uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary structure, and those kind of information. So these information are called, um, these studies which generate um, the information on all these points is um, what we mean by the physicochemical properties. So how do we um, study the physicochemical properties? So this study uh, would require us to um, use physical, physical or chemical techniques, okay? So we use physical or chemical techniques to directly measure measure the physical chemical properties that we have list listed here. So what could be the physical? Um, these techniques, uh, examples would be, um, say for the determination of the structure, we would have uh, spectroscopic techniques, okay? Um, um, spectroscopic techniques like uh, NMR, okay? Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy, um, Mass Spectroscopy, um, or um, uh, X-ray crystallography, um, or um, if you want to purify um, and you need to understand the purity of the um, formulation, you need techniques like HPLC, okay. high performance liquid chromatography, or it's uh, different variations like uh, TLC, HPTLC, etc. Um, or if it's uh, protein, the sequencing information, um, to do an amino acid um, sequencing. Okay. So using these techniques, we can directly measure the physical chemical properties. Okay. So um, what about biological activity? So for biological activity, for measuring biological activity, okay, we use bioassays. Okay, so um, from a regulatory standpoint, we need to understand everything about the drug. And the most important uh, properties would be physical chemical properties and biological activity. For physical chemical properties, we do it directly. Okay, we use the techniques to measure um, the physical chemical properties. But biological activities, um, we do bioassays. Okay, so it's an indirect technique. So it's an indirect measurement. Um, on a biological system. Yeah. So we try to measure the um, activity of the drug 
on a biological system. And um, what do we use for that? We use bioassays. Okay? So, yeah. Let's understand the word assay. We would be visiting this word um, quite often subsequently. Okay. So, what's an assay? So, assay, okay? An assay is um, well defined um, analytical method. Um, that contains that contains the measurement procedure the measurement procedure and uh, how the measurement should be interpreted interpreted um, uh, to obtain the properties of the system okay so the end goal is to obtain the properties of the system So that is what we mean by an assay. Okay. Okay. So it's an um, analytical method here. Okay. Um, so biological assays Yeah, so these uh, two words are contracted to give bioassays. Okay? So it's basically a contraction of these two words. So what do we mean by a bioassay? Okay? So bioassay, um, it's basically the determination of... Uh, relative potency um, or the nature or the um, nature of the um, test drug okay, nature of the um, test drug uh, by the effects, okay, by the effects they produce on a biological test system, okay, on a biological, on a biological test system. So that is what a biological assay is all about. Okay? So the most important information that we glean out of a bioassay is the relative potency. So when we say relative potency, it is relative to something. And that something being the standard drug. Okay? So we'll come back to that point. We'll be visiting that point again. Okay? But uh, for now, we need to understand that biological assays are basically um, we are checking out the, um, the effects of the test drug on a biological system. We are trying to see what kind of uh, changes it brings to the biological test system. Okay? So, what are we talking about? What 
what is the biological test system? What do we mean by a biological test system? What are the examples of the biological test system? So let's um, discuss that. So a biological test system, um, it can be biochemical, Um, which means um, an example would be um, um, like the activity of an enzyme okay? or uh, the ability uh, of the drug, of the test drug to bind to a protein. Okay. Um, so these are the examples of um, biochemical um, test systems. So the biological test system can either be biochemical. And what do we mean by biochemical? It's basically testing the activity of an enzyme or the ability of the test drug to bind to a protein. Okay, so usually these are subcellular, okay, meaning um, some components within the cell is taken um, to develop the test system. So it may so the biological test system may be biochemical or it could be cell based. Okay. So this cell based meaning it can be um, uh, could be on um, isolated uh, primary cells or uh, um, cell lines, okay, cell lines which are derived from primary cells, okay, or they may be transformed cell lines. So if suppose we've got an organ, uh, maybe say a liver, okay, and from that we take uh, cells and we culture it and the cells that we obtain this way we call it a primary um, cells, okay, the cells that we derive from such cultures we call it primary cells. And if we um, stabilize the cell line and then we deposit it in a depository and we um, get the cells from that depository. So all those cells would be derived from this initial culture. So such uh, cells, um, uh, we call them cell lines. Okay? And transformed cell lines are cell lines um, um, to which we put, a, um, you know, we we insert a genetic information in the form of a plasmid uh, um, by transfection and so on. Okay? So those are called transformed cell lines. And so we can have uh, cell-based assays. We could use these um, cells in culture to test our drug. So those, uh, then the biological test system, we call it cell-based, okay? meaning the uh, structural and functional unit in those assays would be cells. Okay, so we call it uh, cell-based assays. Or we could have uh, tissue, organ, um, or organoid-based. Okay. okay. So. Um, we talked about cells. So cells um, normally aggregate to form tissues. Okay? So cells aggregate to form tissues. So when we use tissues, for example, heart tissue, or muscle tissue, then that's a tissue-based system. If we use, um, so tissues get specialized into organs. Okay, like the heart. So if we use uh, um, an isolated heart or an intact heart, that is a organ-based system. 
Okay, usually um, the definition would be limited to isolated organs, okay? So isolated um, organs, um, then it would be an organ-based system. Or it could be an organoid-based system. So what's an organoid? An organoid is basically an artificially prepared uh, three-dimensional assembly of cells that perform a common function, okay? That perform a common function, we call it an organoid. So the biological test system could um, either be a tissue, an organ, or an organ organoid-based system, or it could be a whole animal, okay? It could be a whole animal or an animal-based system, okay? So a biological test system could be... Um, a biological system, it could be cell-based, it could be tissue organ or organoid-based, or it could be a whole animal system, okay? So, um, uh, so biological test systems could be classified like so. Okay. Okay. Um, so based on this, we could uh, broadly classify these four classifications as um, in vitro, ex vivo, or in vivo. Okay? So in vitro is when we take the secondary, we, we do experiments on cell lines, um, we purchase cell lines from a depository um, and do assays on it. We call it an in vitro system. Okay. Or um, um, uh, uh, biochemical assay. Okay. Um, that would be an example of an in vitro system. Ex vivo is, we say this is a rabbit. Okay. Um, say this is a rabbit. Um, and um, we kill the rabbit and we excise out uh, tissue, say, the ileum of the rabbit. Okay. Ileum of the rabbit, and we put it into an artificial culture, uh, uh, artificial physiological solution. And then we... Uh, try to find out the activity on this, uh, activity of the new drug on this um, chicken helium uh, preparation using transducers, then those kind of um, assays where we derive the tissue immediately from the animal and subject it to assays, we call it ex vivo. Okay? And in vivo is when we do experiments on the intact animal, like uh, um, intact uh, heart studies, okay? Uh, we do perfusion studies on the heart whilst it is still attached to the animal. Those kind of experiments we call it in vivo. So all the examples that we um, mentioned above, the biochemical, the cell-based, and the tissue organ or organoid-based, and the animal assays, we can broadly classify them as um, in vitro, ex vivo, and in vivo assays. So, that could be another way to classify the biological test system. Let us visit the definition of bioassays again. So, we uh, mentioned that biological assays uh, involve the determination of relative potency. Let's visit this point again. Let's... Uh, Mm. Uh, let's discuss this aspect, okay? Relative potency. Okay? So when we say relative potency, what we mean is that potency is relative to something. Potency is relative. What that means is the potency is compared to something. It 
is compared to something. And what is that something? To a standard drug. So conventionally, um, the standard drug is uh, denoted by um, capital S, okay? And the drug, um, the new drug, um, whose potency we try to compare with the standard, that new drug or the test drug, okay, is called the unknown. So the test drug is often called the unknown. And then the standard notation would be, yes, full points to you, um, by capital U. Okay? So what does the bioassay do? Okay, so the bioassay um, is designed to provide an estimate, it provides an estimate um, of the dose or concentration of U, meaning the unknown or the test drug, um, that will produce produce um, the same biological effect um, as that of a known concentration of S, okay, the standard drug, okay. Um, so let's uh, illustrate it. Let's say there is a drug um, that produces this kind of a dose-response curve. Okay. So let's say this is a percentage response versus the log dose. Okay. So let this be the um, log dose-response curve of the um, standard. Okay? And um, let this be the log um, dose response curve of the test or the unknown. Okay? Um, now, what we would um, infer is that at uh, lower doses, the standard drug has got uh, a response, okay? Whereas the unknown, you need to give a larger dose to produce the same kind of effect as that of standard, okay? Uh, but what is important to note here is the log dose response curve is parallel, okay? But since the unknown is to the right of the standard, we say that the uh, standard is more potent than the test. Okay? So for, say, this response, say this is a 20% response, uh, and you give a dose of maybe uh, 10 microgram of the standard and it produces this response of 20 percent and uh, the same response of 20 is produced by um, say uh, 20 microgram of unknown okay so now we have got a um, comparison okay so 10 microgram um, 10 microgram of standard is equals equals 20 microgram of the unknown. Okay. 
So from this we can easily calculate uh, one um, microgram of the unknown equals um, 0.5 uh, microgram of the standard. Okay. So ultimately from uh, um, a bioassay we get an information like this how much um, um, relative to the standard, what is the potency of the unknown. Okay, so that is the information we glean from, an, uh, from a bioassay. Okay? Uh, so when we say bioassay, we presuppose that there is a comparison of the potency to the standard. Okay? So uh, where do we get the standard would be the next question. Okay? Um, so there are um, um, internationally accepted depositories of um, standard um, um, drugs from which we can source the standard for us to enable comparison. Okay? And one of the most important uh, depository is the um, National Institute of biological standards uh, and uh, control, okay? Uh, the NIBSC, okay? This is in the UK and uh, um, this depository uh, supplies um, biological standards to researchers uh, all over the globe. Um, so if one needs to do a bioassay, one needs to have a standard because ultimately um, in a bioassay, um, um, bio, the bioassay is based on comparison. Let's uh, visit the graph again that we drew and plug in some more information here. Okay, so this kind of uh, response curve is called a log dose response curve. Okay, it relates um, its uh, plot between percentage response and log dose. Okay, so from a typical curve like this we get uh, two information. One is uh, with respect to the concentration uh, relative to the standard and the other information is about potency. Okay? And potency. Okay? Information with regards to potency and the um, concentration relative to the standard. Okay. So these are the two information that we derive from a typical bioassay. Okay. Okay. A typical bioassay. Um, we derive two information, one with regards to the potency and two, um, the concentration relative to the standard. Okay, so that is the take-home point um, about um, a typical bioassay. Okay. All right. um, so next we're going to talk about the principles. bioassay. What we discussed above happens to be the principle of bioassay. So let's write it down what we mean by the principle of bioassay. So the main principle would be uh, the principle of bioassay um, 
is to compare um, the test substance with, uh, so here we mean U, test substance U, with an international standard preparation of the same. Okay. Um, and the next principle would be the bioassay utilizes um, a recognized action of a drug. Okay. Um, let's put this in perspective. Um, so, uh, let's say um, we are doing an ex vivo experiment. Okay. For this, say we've taken a chicken, let's say, a chicken and we have isolated the ileum, okay? Uh, so this ileum, this piece of ileum, um, we um, kind of attach it to uh, an aerator tube, okay? and this tube is supplying air, and we put the tube as well as the tissue in another uh, container. And this container, let's say, has physiological solution. Okay, like, uh, say, tyroid solution. Okay. And we want to transduce okay, the response of this. Um, so we attach one part to a liver. Okay? One part of the tissue to a liver. And uh, uh, we fix it to a fulcrum and we try to record the information onto a a rotating drum, okay? Let's say this is the rotating drum. Um, and let's, um, so, let's say there is a pointer like that. Okay, so there is a pointer. And uh, as the tissue contracts or relaxes, the pointer kind of draws a response, okay? Okay. Um, so, it is known that uh, the neurotransmitter acetylcholine can contract a smooth muscle. Okay, so ileum is a smooth muscle. Okay? It's a smooth muscle. So it is known that acetylcholine can contract a smooth muscle. Okay? And let's, uh, for this thought experiment, let's assume that uh, I have taken a plant, uh, say this is a, from a tree, and I have extracted it. And uh, my hypothesis is that it has got a acetylcholine-like um, uh, chemical uh, principle in the extract. Okay. Um, so I want to compare the cholinergic activity of this extract to a standard acetylcholine preparation. Okay. So I source uh, standard acetylcholine and I um, make dilutions of my extract 
and uh, I initially put um, STL, standard STL call in and I record the response and I um, wash the preparation and then I add my extract and I see what's the change in response. Okay, So that's what we're doing here. We're comparing the test substance to the international standard preparation. Okay, But uh, I'm trying to look at the um, contraction of the skeletal muscle for which I know acetylcholin brings about contraction. So I need to use acetylcholin when I'm checking for um, a contraction um, um, of my extract. I can't use adrenaline here, okay? Um, because adrenaline wouldn't be causing a, a contraction of the muscle. So when I test something, um, I should have uh, a standard that has got the same response, okay? So that, that is the first point that we are looking at. Um, I mean the second point, okay? Uh, it utilizes a recogni recognized action of the drug. In this case, uh, what is the recognized action? Has still called in bringing about contraction, okay? And um, the test substance should be same to the, uh, it should produce the same, uh, um, uh, no, the standard should produce the same um, response um, that I intend to obtain with my um, extract, okay? So these are the two important uh, principles of bioassay, okay? Uh, it utilizes the recognized action of a drug and we compare the test to a international standard preparation of the same. At the um, so we've looked at the principle of bioassay. We looked at the introduction, and now let's look at the applications of bioassay. Please bear with me. Okay. Applications of bioassay. So bioassays um, are uh, generally employed are generally employed um, as we have uh, discussed uh, um, to characterize a biological activity okay. um, they are used uh, when um, chemical assay is unavailable okay. uh, it's used when a chemical assay when the chemicals in the um, chemical assay um, interacts with the uh, unknown, okay? Unknown drug, okay? Um, it is used um, um, when the bioassay is more sensitive. compared to other 
assays. So suppose the bioassay can resolve uh, uh, responses at the nanomolar concentration, and chemical assays are sensitive only in the um, micromolar range, then we would definitely be using a bioassay because it's more sensitive. Okay, so that could be an illustration where that's used. Um, when the standard, uh, I mean the test, so when the test sample is uh, limited, okay, so when we have very less amount of the test sample, then uh, bioassay would be preferred. So in this case, uh, the kind of assay that is done is uh, matching assays are usually done, okay, when this is the case, okay. So um, the other time where bioassays are employed is um, um, if the unknown is uh, impure uh, or if the unknown is not chemically defined. Okay. So usually only if the unknown is chemically defined do we have chemical assays because those are based on chemical reactions. Now if we do not know the chemical structure then uh, bioassay would be the best option. Okay. Um, 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 so, uh, these are the um, times or these are um, the conditions where bioassays are generally employed. Okay? So, the number one is um, it is used to characterize uh, biological activity. Uh, number two is when the chemical assay is unavailable. Okay? So, when it is not chemically defined. Uh, when the chemicals um, in the assay interferes with the unknown, then chemical assay would not be an option. Bioassay would be preferred. And four, when the bioassay is more sensitive compared to other assays, we have illustrated um, that with an example. And uh, if the test sample is limited, okay? So when, suppose we extract a very rare um, natural product, um, then a matching assay would be preferred. Okay? Um, if the unknown is impure, meaning suppose this extract, let's come back to this example that we talked about. So this extract presumably in addition to con containing cholinergic uh, principles would also have maybe other alkaloids or um, carbohydrates or proteins or fats. Um, so it wouldn't be chemically pure, okay? So in such condition, when the extract is impure, then bioassay uh, would be preferred, okay? So these are the applications of uh, bioassay as it pertains to pharmaceutical research.